you all your students. Mr. Lawrence here, and we're going to do a couple quick problems some we focused on today. Now remember, there's a quiz on Wednesday for second period, uh, eighth period. Your quiz is actually going to be 4-6 part of uh, Thursday because I've had the other kids for an extra hour. Of course, you're on your honor system to not talk about the quiz. All right, so first of all, we're going to do dilations of the rectangle, and we're going to do it about point Q with a scale factor equal to one half. All right, let me call this point P, and we'll call this Q. This will be R, and this will be S. Okay? Uh, now, when the scale factor is one half about point Q, point Q is not moving. All I'm going to do is I'm going to count how long is QR. Well, QR appears to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Half of 7 is 3 and a half, so 1, 2, 3 and a half. There we go. So QP is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. There's the new P. So we'll call it P prime. We'll call this uh, R prime, not Q prime, sorry. R prime. And then S prime will be at their intersection right there. So this new rectangle will be like this, right? There you go. That's it. Piece of cake. When it's about the point, it doesn't move. All right, so now I'm going to do the original one, dilate the original one, about the origin with a scale factor of negative 2. Well, for this one, I need the coordinates. So let's see here. P's coordinates are negative 4, 2. Q's coordinates are negative 4, uh, 8. R's coordinates are at 3, 8. And S's coordinates are at 3, 2. Well, for the scale factor of negative 2, with the origin center, or about the origin, I'm just going to multiply by negative 2. So I'll get 8 minus 8 and negative 4. Q double prime will become 8 negative 16. Ooh, that's going to go off the graph. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, R is going to be at negative 6, negative 16. And S, double prime, is going to be at negative 6, negative 4. All right, so 8, negative 4, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the new P. Now, what I want you to notice is P was in the lower left-hand corner. The new P will be in the upper right corner because the negative scale factor caused it to flip upside down. Okay, now um, R is going to be at, or S is going to be at negative 6, negative 4, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so there's the S double prime. Now I got to go down, uh, I'm going to go to 8, negative 16, and it's negative 6, negative 16, so this would be negative 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that will be Q. And then the other one will be right about there. Might be off a little bit because of human error. P, Q, R. And then I can just go ahead and connect them. It's okay that it goes off the graph. That's not a huge deal. It doesn't bother me. All right. Okay, it looks like it's off a little bit, but that's human error. Okay. On a test, I'll give you ones that stay on the grid. And let me move that. Oops. That down there. There we go. And that's it. The negative scale factor. Now, it is hard to tell, but if you look, P was in the lower left. Now it's in the upper right. R is in the upper right. Guess what? The new R is in the lower left. Okay, so that's a dilation. Now, I know uh, Sam was asking about uh, rotations, eighth period, and we didn't have enough time to get to it, but I, I, don't worry, I promise I'll cover it. I'll cover it now. And so, first of all, I'm going to need point A, point B, and point C. So, A's coordinates are negative 2, 1. 
these coordinates are at 4, 2. And C's coordinates are at 8, negative 2. All right. And we're going to rotate 180 degrees. Hold on one second. Going to rotate 180 degrees. And so what's that going to do for me? Well, all that's going to happen is my two coordinates are going to switch places. And so A prime will, oh, excuse me, they're not going to switch places. They're going to switch signs. The negatives will become positive, and the positives will become negative. So A was at 2, negative 1, or excuse me, negative 2, 1. The new one will be at 2, negative 1. There's the new A prime. And I like it because 180 degrees. I'm in quadrant 2, and I move to quadrant 4, the opposite quadrant. Hey, B is in quadrant 1. I'll bet it'll been, I'll, it better end up in quadrant 3. Well, let's see. B prime is going to be negative 4, negative 2, because the two co uh, coordinates just change signs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and there's the new B. C's down in quadrant 4. I'm guessing it's going to go up into quadrant 2, but let's try. Change 8 to a negative. Change the 2 to a positive. Negative 8, 1, 2, right there, and there is C prime. And so if I draw my segments in here, A to B, B to C, and C back to A, and there you go. Sure enough, it's kind of pointing up to the right, pointing down to the left. Okay, flat side next to the origin on the one side, flat side next to the origin on the other side of the circle. Pretty easy stuff. Okay, now I know some of you get confused with the uh, with the um, 90 degree rotations, and I'll tell you what I'm going to get rid of the uh, the A prime B prime stuff because uh, I don't want it to confuse. You can always rewind and look again. Okay, now for the 90 degree rotation, all I care about I care about two things: one, x and y switch places, so x y point x y becomes the point y, x. But then I care about what quadrant I'm going to end up in. Okay, so A is at negative 2, 1. Now I know A for 90 degrees counterclockwise. Let's see, clockwise would be this way. So counterclockwise is going to be going this way, right? So A is in quadrant 2 where you have a negative and a positive. It's going to be moving to quadrant 3 where both things are negative. So I'm not even paying attention to the signs. I'm just going to switch x and y and then say, hey, what quadrant am I in? So I've got a 2 and a 1. I'll write a 1 and then a 2. But I'm in quadrant 3 where they're both negative. Boom, boom. Negative 2, negative 1. There's the new A. Okay. B. B is currently in quadrant 1 where both things are positive. Going counterclockwise 90 degrees, it's going to end up quadrant 2, where, thing, where it's negative x, positive y. So I look at 4 and 2. They switch places. And then I need x to be the negative one. So negative 2, 1, 2. Oops, I have a mistake there. Sorry. A prime is in the wrong place. It's negative 1, negative 2. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay going to be negative 2, positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the new B. Okay. C prime. I see an 8 and a 2. I switch it to a 2 and an 8. C is in quadrant 4. It's going to quadrant 1, where both things are positive. 1, 2, 8. There we go. And so the 90 degree rotation goes A to B, B to C, and then C back to A. And that's it. So for a 90 degree rotation, I switch X and Y and then ask myself, well, quadrant am I in? And then that's how I give myself my signs based on the quadrant I'm in. Okay. All right, here we're going to do two reflections. And the first one is going to be a reflection across the line X equals 2.5. Well, remember, if you have a hard time finding a mirror, write down two points, 2.50 and 2.5, and 3. How did I know to write those points? Because x had to be 2.5. So let's see here, 2.5, 1, 2.5, 0, 
and 2 and a half, 3 would be those two points. My mirror will go through right there, just like that. I'm going to change the color of that mirror. I'll tell you what, I'll make it a green mirror. Why? Because it's not easy. All right, so I count the distance to the mirror. This point here is a half from the mirror. The new one will be half from the mirror. That's a half from the mirror. Boom. This one here is one, two and a half. So I'll go half, one and a half, two and a half right there. Okay, this one is one, two, two and a half there. I'll go one, two, two and a half there. Now, I probably should have lettered these. Call that A. I'll call this one B, C, and D. <laughs> Excuse me. Which makes this one A prime. This one's B prime. This one over here is C prime. And this one over here is D prime. And now I just connect A to B, B to C, C to D, and then back to A. And there you go. Now, I guess I could change these colors. Hold on one second so they show up a little bit better. There we go. Make them a little bit thinner. And there we are. There is the reflection. OK. Now, we're going to do the original shape across the line x equals negative 1. Again, if you're a kid that gets this mixed up, write down two points. The only stipulation is that um, I said x equals negative 1. It's y equals negative 1. Sorry about that. 0, 4. OK, 0, negative 1 is right there. 4, 1, 3, 4, negative 1 is right there. This must be a horizontal line. Yes, a horizontal line. I'll do this one in magenta. Blues friend, right, from back in the day. Okay, so there we go. All right. Now I'll just count the distance to the mirror. D is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the new D. A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, B is there. One closer, A prime. Okay, B prime. C is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there is C prime. Now, when I go to connect, A, oops, wrong one. Sorry about that. Out of the way, go to connect. And A is going to go to B. And B is going to go to C. C is going to go to D. And then D is going to go back to A. And there you go. It's just a mirror image of the original. All right. I believe that's it for you. I didn't do any translations. But this was to help you for the quiz. Mr. Ward, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.